our next speaker, Professor Dr. Asim Khan, Dr. Inzbatu, Chemical Engineer from Sats University, Salabat, Pakistan. Please, Dr. Asim. Uh, of uh, 
temperature and CO2 concentration in the, in the atmosphere, you may see that as the CO2 composition in the last century is going up, the temperature, the average temperature of Earth is also going up, leading to global warming. And in the past couple of years, we have already surpassed the limit of 400 ppm of CO2. And the more fossil fuels we are using, the more concentration of CO2 is going to rise going to keep on rising over and over again. So what we can do as scientists, as researchers, we can take different steps. One of the steps is not using fossil fuels for energy requirement. As the population of the world is going to rise, we need to have, we need, uh, there will be more demand of energy and we will use more fossil fuels. So what can we do? We can go for alternate energy fuels. But is it will or in the near future will it will we be able to shift completely to alternate energy fuels probably not so we will probably be continuing to use fossil fuels so what can we do we can try to capture the co2 that is emitted from our plants from natural gas plants from different process industries and in order to capture co2 there are different techniques that are currently and successfully used in process industries we can use water scrubbing, absorption, adsorption, cryogenic separation. But in a comparative study that we did about nine years ago, we found out that membrane separation is by far the most sustainable. Why? Because it is a simple process, involves low capital cost, high energy efficiency, it is scalable, and the membranes once produced as we saw in the last talk, in the last talk, can be commercialized in the form of pilot scale or upscale projects by using the right modules. And when we talk about membranes, there are a number of, uh, number of major parameters that we have to uh, calculate or measure. A membrane, how fast the gases permeate, the CO2 permeates through the membrane. How selective is the membrane? How robust is the membrane? How much is the mechanical stability? What is the thermal stability of the membrane? And finally, how long the, me the membrane will work? So a good or an excellent membrane that can be used for CO2 capture would be the one that has very high permeability, that has high selectivity for the desired gas, and obviously that has the long lifetime. Um, in Pakistan, we have the largest membrane-based gas separation plant. Uh, which is used to treat the natural gas. It is the world's largest. And last year, Richard Baker, who is one of the uh, leading um, uh, CO2 separation uh, scientists and industrialists, he was visiting us. And with, with these collaboration and discussion, we, they came up with, it, with this number that in order to counteract this phenomenon of global warming and in order to capture CO2 and in order to convince the industry to use membranes for CO2 separation, this is a global target. We have to have membranes that can separate one ton of CO2 by only 40 US dollars, which is in the current membrane market and the current performance of membranes is really higher than this number. So what can we do? We can go for system design, we can go for process optimization, process intensifications, and there is also a lot of work that needs to be done on membrane materials. We have to develop new new materials and new membrane processes. The major problem with membrane materials is, you, you can see in this chart, there is a trade-off between the membrane permeability, CO2 permeability, and selectivity of CO2 against other gases. So we need all the materials, nearly all the materials that exist right now have a limitation. You can see this negative slope of line. In order for the membrane to be commercialized, to be used in industry, it has to have, this is a plot between permeability of CO2 and selectivity of CO2 with methane. It needs to have permeability and selectivity so that it should be placed in this region. In other words, the membrane needs to be highly permeable and highly selective. There can be, there have, the proposal has been that a number of steps can be taken, task specific, the polymer that are, that are the main materials which are used to make membranes, they can be modified, new polymers can be formed, mixed matrix membranes, 
we in which a polymer and an inorganic material is combined to form a new type of membrane can be used. And more recently, this area, this proposal is coming up that ionic liquids, a new type of material, can be used in membranes to increase the permeability and selectivity of the membranes. In form cells, we have used, we have been trying to use all these three different areas. We are trying to tailor or modify new polymers, uh, synthesizing polymers, so that we can have better permeability and selectivity. We are working with mixed matrix membrane, and more recently, we have also started using ionic liquid to make new type of membranes. Mixed matrix membrane, which is the most successful of all these techniques for CO2 separation, are actually incorporation of inorganic particles in polymer matrices. By incorporation of fillers or inorganic materials in polymers, what we can do, we can make use of good properties of the polymers, that is low cost and high processability and very high separation properties of inorganic materials. Typical fillers that have been recently used in mixed matrix membranes are zeolites, silica, carbon nanotubes, etc. However, the main problem with these mixed matrix membranes is that because polymers and fillers, they don't really, they have different nature, they don't really like each other, so there is a problem of aggregation, there is a problem of formation of these spaces. So this is the inorganic material and a polymer matrix, and as you may see, there is a problem of uh, there are spaces and due to these spaces, the membrane does not become very selective. So what we have been doing, we started with uh, conventional zeolites which everybody was using and silica and we tried to mix it with the polymer matrices. We tried to make, mix, we tried to make mixed matrix membranes using polymer and inorganic uh, materials and we found out that the, the problem was everyone was facing, we also faced the same problem. There were, the membranes that we formed and that we synthesized were defective. Every time we made a membrane with polymer and zeolites or polymer and silica, there were defects or voids in between. What we tried to do, we introduced a coupling agent and we introduced covalent linkage between the polymer and zeolites. And due to this coupling agent, due to this interaction with the polymer and the zeolite surface, you were able to fill these voids. And as you will see, this is the same picture of the membrane without coupling agent. And here you can see the fill with coupling agent. So by having a coupling agent, we were able to make non-defective mixed matrix membranes and achieve better separation. But this type of work would involve a lot of cost. It looks very fancy, we were able to solve the problem, but will it build this type of membrane for the industry? Probably no. So, what we moved to was the use of metal organic frameworks as filler in mixed matrix membranes. Metal organic frameworks are simply combining a metal salt with an organic linker. And when we combine these metal salts with organic linkers, we, can, we come up with a three-dimensional framework that, act, that can act as a filler between the, with the polymer to make mixed matrix membranes. Here you can see from this chart that already there have been a number of metal organic frameworks or MOFs in short that have surpassed the, robust, the upper bound that I just showed because these materials have very high uh, permeability and selectivity. And because we use is organic linkers. So since it is organic, it has better interaction with the polymer matrix in comparison to the conventional zeolites. So these metal organic frameworks have very high surface areas and by, they can interact and capture CO2 by a number of different processes. We can use, by depending on the pore sizes, we can do molecular sieving, adsorption, quadrupole type of interaction, as well as other affinity like Lewis acid and Lewis bases. I will just show a few studies that we did. In one of the studies, we used a very common MOF known as UIO66. It was first synthesized at the University of Oslo, that's why called as UIO66. Um, and we functionalized it with sulfonic acid groups so, have, so, so, can, so that we can have more CO2 interactions. Uh, this UIU66 is a zirconium-based MOF, so as I mentioned, metalline and organic linker. So in 
this case, zirconium is the metal ion, and organic linker is from terephthalic acid, and it has a nice three-dimensional structure, nice cubic structure, pretty crystalline structure. We um, uh, functionalized it with sulfonic acid groups and use it with a polymer to make mixed matrix membranes. Second type of MOF that we use very successfully, we, uh, it is called as BioMOF. Why it is called BioMOF? Because it contains, for metal, it uses oval, and for organic linker, it uses adenine based proteins. So, we synthesized this BioMOF, we selected this BioMOF because it has multiple Lewis acid and basic sites, and CO2 can interact with this type of MOF through this Lewis acid and base relationships. This MOF has high CO2 uptake capacity and can be made by just using a cobalt salt and adenine base to make a three-dimensional morphological structure. And the finally, uh, the third MOF that I would like to highlight is the BIT-72. It is an aluminium-based MOF in which uh, two hydroxy uh, biphenyl carboxylate is the linker, aluminium is the organ, is the is the metal. It is highly stable in harsh condition. It has very high surface area of 1,415 meters square in just one gram of MOV. It has high CO2 uptake capacity and high porosity. What we did, we synthesized by BIT-72, this aluminium-based MOV, and then we functioned because we wanted to have higher permeance and higher selectivity. So we functionalized it by using plasma treatment in collaboration with the University of Liverpool. Liverpool, and we, do, we did two types of plasma treatments to introduce CO2 filling groups. We did oxygen plasma treatment and nitrogen plasma treatment to introduce CO2 filling groups, and the hypothesis was that we can probably further increase the selectivity. So these were the three MOVs, UIU-66, zirconium-based by a MOV, which was uh, <coughs> cobalt-based, and BIT-72, which was plasma treatment, uh, treated, uh, synthesized by using aluminium-based uh, metal. And as you can see, we, we were, even after plasma treatment, we were able to maintain the crystallinity and pebble-shaped structure of these MOVs. I will, uh, in this uh, chart, I have summarized the results of all these important MOVs. Um, so, you can see uh, this, and, uh, this is again CO2 permeability and selectivity. These two are the results. This one is UIO66 without modification. As you can see, even though we have reduced permeability, but we have increased affinity because of the sulfonic acid growth. This one is uh, biomorph. Because of this Lewis acid basic sites, we have we were able to approach very close to the upper bound. And the most interesting results are from the bit 72. This one is bit 72 without modification, and then these two with oxygen and nitrogen modification. So we were able to successfully synthesize the MOV and mix matrix membrane, which can surpass the upper bound and hopefully. Uh, a material that can be attractive for industrial application. Finally, one slide about uh, um, our more re recent work. We are now trying to use ionic liquid. Ionic liquids are simply organic salts that contain anions and cations. And by changing the anion and cation, we can use, make hundreds of ionic liquids for different applications. So in our lab, we are trying to synthesize ionic liquid for CO2 capture liquids that have more affinity with CO2 and we are, this ZIP-8, it is another type of MOV using uh, zinc as a metal and another uh, metazole as organic linker and we are trying to capture or, uh, or immobilize ionic liquid in the pores of MOV and our immobilized uh, ionic liquid, you can see this one is MOV without ionic liquid and this on the right is more with ionic liquid, we can still maintain the crystallinity and shape of the particles with ionic liquid. And since it is a liquid, so we can expect that there will be better affinity between polymer and the filler because it can act as a factory bedding agent. And the results also show that the one with ionic liquid have more, much higher selectivities than the one which are without ionic liquid. Finally, I will conclude 
Um, from the, these studies, we what we observe, mixed matrix membranes are one of the most successful approach for CO2 capture from flue gases and natural gas streams. Selection. With mobs, we can make hundreds of mobs. Just use a different metal and organic linker and you can make a new mob. But the selection of mob is very important and not, not just for writing a new paper, we can use a select, we can select a mob. We should do simulation study first to find out and to select the mob that has more CO2 capture abilities. The selected mob should be further tuned by adding the functional groups so that we can achieve very high permeabilities and selectivities and we can hopefully use the mob to make an uh, excellent mixed matrix membrane. And finally, we have what we have found that new type of ionic liquid that are specially synthesized for a certain application and more recently we have also worked with uh, these new type of solvents for this DQ technique solvent and they can be used to perform dual function. If we have the right ionic liquid, it can use, it can work to increase the separation and it can also be used as a wetting agent between the polymer and the mold and the filler and as a result we will have a better adhesion between the polymer and filler. I would like to, con uh, to thank our team, uh, the membrane group and concepts for their excellent effort in these studies and finally Higher Education Commission of Pakistan for all this funding to, uh, to conduct these studies. Thank you very much. Thank you, Dr. Asim, for your deep presentation. And actually, uh, for guest narration, we have a group with, uh, will start to deal with the guest narration, especially the hybrid. But uh, we have let the experience but from your presentation, Dr. Uh, Eva, we, we have to encourage the correlation with Dr. Asim to rise our experience in this situation. Thank you, Dr. Asim. Thanks a lot.